some of the main pieces of evidence. Um, one of the big ones was the missing plank of wood in Bruno's attic, which perfectly matched nail holes and everything to the ladder that was used to climb up into the Lindbergh's house. And also, the money stashed in his, that the ransom money that they used was stashed in Bruno's garage, and it was the same gold certificates and had the same serial numbers that the Lindberghs used because they knew he was going to spend the money so they knew they could catch him. And then he also had, okay, so Cordon was the lead prosecutor on the case, and basically what his job was, he was the middleman. He was the one giving him the money, so he was sort of a double agent, pretending to be on Bruno's side but not actually. And so he had Bruno's name, number, and address written in one of the closets in his house. So where would he need that in for me? This is the defense of the Lindbergh kidnapping. So there was an eyewitness that said they saw Hopman take the child, but the witness was legally blind. Um, there were no fingerprints found anywhere, and there was not a murder weapon, and no one actually ever saw him with the baby. There were a number of ways that Hopman's whole situation could have been tampered with. For example, his work hours were changed that week, um, and the lineup of the, eye, the legally blind eyewitness was absolutely ridiculous. It was like a man, like a really, really old man, a woman, and it was just obvious. Like they they didn't even give him a chance. Um, and then ear witness accounts, the prosecutor on the other side basically said, oh yeah, this is him. And it, because he didn't clean up his tracks at all. So it seems staged, but it's really not. So honestly, I really do think he did it because his excuses just don't add up. 